ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم يغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوضا عظيما اما بعد ان خير الحديث كتاب الله خير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم شر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه كل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد يقول الله عز وجل رجال لا تلهيهم تجاره ولا بيع عن ذكر الله واقام الصلاه Before I start, uh, alhamdulillah that you have enjoyed the recitation of Quran. Barakallahu lak. May Allah reward the Sheikh for the recitation. Everybody enjoyed the recitation of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the point is, the book of Allah has been uh, revealed for a lot more purpose than just recitation. Right? Lahu al-khalq wa lahu al-amr. To Allah belongs the creation, to Him belongs... the authority to dictate he gives the laws and regulations and the sheikh started ayah wama qadar allah haqqa qadrihi and people may allah forgive us did not give the due right of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the so the thing i like to ask myself at this point who is willing to bear the weight of the quran who will be the hamil al quran who will carry the weight of the quran he recited the quran enjoyed it and who going to fulfill the rights of the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is willing to do such before you want to give somebody's right you must understand the complete dimensions of the discussion so what is this book even though this was not the discussion i wanted to do but after the recitation from the sheikh hafizahullah that i realized that there should be some enlightenment in this because i felt enlightened so the point he said this book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala among the shabab because everybody wants to be young if they are not young they say i look young whole perception want to be young young people is young the older people want to act like they're young this is the whole 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 idea in people's mind so the shabab the youth got to know who is willing to bear the weight of this quran <coughs> so the first problem is this uh, i i like to ask anybody know what surah was this besides people who are hafiz of the quran they are excluded from the discussion but how many people know what surah was it huh Alex in Surah Al-Hajj? Yes. Nah. Uh, this is Surah Al-Hajj. Uh, anybody know what number of the Surah is this? No, Surah number 22. Tayyip. And this ayah starts with, Ya ayuhal nas, wattuku rabbakum, inna zalzalat al-sa'ad, shayin azim. So, this Surah, Surah Al-Hajj, at the end, Allah talks about so many things. One of the things He said, if alul khair, do the good. Now you listen and enjoy it, This, not a, this wasn't a music party, that's for sure, isn't it, sir? Music is a lesson, so-called for entertainment. Once you leave the podium or you leave the, uh, the hall of the music, you forget. The book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was revealed not to be forgotten, but to be reminded of. Allah said, Allah kathira la'allakum tuflihun. Remembrance of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is beyond just recitation. This is comprehension. Allah said, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ أَلَا كُلُوا بِمَقْفَالُهَا Will you not reflect on the book of Allah or there's a lock in the heart of the people? So the point here is, it is far beyond recitation. And we are the people only hooked up with recitation, which is good, but not good enough. If that was enough, then Allah didn't say, أَفَلَا يَنْذُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبْلِ كَيْفَ خُلَدْ أَلَمْ تَرَ كَيْفَ فَعَلَ رَبُّكَ بِأَسْحَابِ الْفِيلِ Don't you see? Don't you reflect? Don't you understand? So therefore, it takes a little more than just recitation, which is good, starting point. So my point about the shabab, the young men and women, perhaps, uh, today in the gathering. Allah talks about a group of people, the rijal, 
This people, لا تلهيهم تجارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الله. The people, a group of people, the shabab, my objective of today's discussion, that any affairs of the dunya doesn't distract them from the affairs of akhirah. عن ذكر الله. From the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, i.e. the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dhikr could be the Quran. Allah said, نَحْنُ نَذَّنَ الذِّكْرِ إِنَّ لَهُ لَحَافِزٌ This is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dhikr could be salah. أَقِمْ الصَّلَاةِ إِنْ ذِكْرِ Allah said, establish prayer for my remembrance. So dhikr has many different definitions to it. But any form of fashion, are you willing to bear the weight of this book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is the thing I like to ask myself. Then how many people really know what is this book? Every book has the author. And this is the book, the kalam Allah from the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah starts his book with this word, Allah says this is the book, he is the author of the book subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said in this book, there is no shadow of doubt. There is no revision required. It is absolute, not relative. So Allah said, This is guidance, those who are conscious about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So who will be among those who are conscious about Allah? That is the thing I like to ask myself. Towards the end I will say that what are the things doesn't make somebody conscious? It makes people unconscious about Allah. I will point out some of the issues. But before that, what is this book? What is the weight of the book? Allah said, لَوْ أَنذَلْنَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ لَا جَبَلْ لَرَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِيًا مُتَصَدِّيًا مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ If Allah happened to reveal this book on a mountain, not on a car, not on a house, not on a podium, on a mountain. لَوْ أَنزَلْنَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَى جَبَلْ لَا رَأَيْتَهُ You should have seen. This mountain will crumble out of humility of Allah Azza wa Jal. So why Allah said this in Surah Hash, Surah number 59? Why did He say that? Did Allah reveal the book on a mountain? Answer is no. So why He said that? Why He said that? He said, لَوْ أَنزَلْنَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَى جَبَلْ لَا رَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِيًا مُتَصَدِّيًا مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ وَتِلْكَ الْأَمْسَالِ نَدْرِبُهَا لِلنَّاسِ لَيْسَ لِلْحَوِيمَانِ This is not for the animals. It's for the human. Allah said, if Allah revealed this book on a mountain, it will crumble. But Allah gave this example, even though He did not reveal on a mountain. But He did give an example of a mountain. Mountain, the mass of it is huge. As people who study geology and things like that know that the bottom of the mountain has similar kind of mass. So it is humongous. It has a lot of weight. It is a lot of volume. It covers a lot of area. It is very difficult to conquer a mountain. Right? So if Allah said, Allah revealed this book on a mountain, it will crumble. But Allah did not reveal that. But He said, I gave this example to you so people may reflect on the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, now Allah also said another ayat in Quran. Inna aradna al-amanat ala al-samawati wal-ard wal-jibal, fa'abina yahmilna wa ashfakna minha wa hamalah al-insan. Allah said, Allah wanted to reveal, Allah wanted to give this weight, the burden of this deen over the mountain, over the earth, but the decline, not decline out of Negligence, decline out of the fear that they cannot bear the weight of it. Hamalah al insan. And mankind was willing to bear the weight of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah said, Inna hukana dhalumun jahula. Verily, they are ignorant and oppressive. The oppression is not against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are oppression against their own self. There are famous dua in the Quran, Rabbana zalamna anfusana. Because nobody can oppress Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is Qawi, it's powerful. Al Hay, Al Qayyum, Al Jabbar, Al Samawati, Al Art. So Allah is not that you can oppress, we oppress our own self. So the, to the young men and women, my point is that will you bear the weight of this Quran? Some of the points while the Shaykh was reciting, I feel like copied some of the points so I can talk about it. Allah praised certain class of people in the Quran. الذين اتبهم بإحسان رضي الله عنهم ورضون الله عز وجل said Allah praised those people who are the foremost the Imam said those who came early let us come forward and those who come late they'll be in the back but Allah talks about سابقون الأولون Allah said those who are first and foremost in doing good فاستبقوا الخيرات rush to do good compete each other فليتنافس المتنافسون 
There's a competing mentality has to be established in deen, not in dunya. So I said, what makes you conscious about Allah? The book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Complete reminder, association with good people, coming to the masjid, all is thinking about death. Aksar al-dhikr min hadhim al Constant reminder about death. These are the element keep you conscious about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what other thing doesn't keep you conscious about Allah? I need to point them out likewise. A friend. A friend. I also saw something in hadith. Al-mar'u ala deeni khalili fal yandhuru ahadukum ma yukhalil aw kama qal sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A person is connected to their companionship of people. So we are a social animal. So we live with people, not with animals. So therefore, once you associate with some people, especially people into school system, public school, or regardless, public school is devastating, it is fatal, it is detrimental uh, to the growth of religion for some people, regardless, no matter how you fashion it, it's just not going to work. Even Islamic school are potentially fatal also. So public school, regardless, is fatal. Islamic school are potentially fatal unless you know what to do with it. For example, people blame academic institutions. People blame academic institutions for different things. The school doesn't teach, for example. What is the school? It is a facility where some people come to learn, some people come there to teach. The people who teach, they call them faculty. People simply the brain or the nucleus of the system. So they're supposed to teach people and people are supposed to learn. It's a two-way street. In a school system, Islamic or un-Islamic school, whatever they are, if you go into these places, some of the things you are going to see. Associations, people. And we, the young men and women, our major problem is this. When you see somebody doing something, when somebody doing something, unless you have a strong background in religion, or even though you have a strong background, we are subject to influence of others. Isn't that so? Like in winter time, you wear a jacket. Summertime, you don't. Why not? Because the environment doesn't compel you to do so. But when you go to school system, your buddies, your friends, your colleagues start doing things, saying things, acting upon issues that influences your mind. The environment compels you to do something. For example, the rest of them listen to music. And you sit down in the back. And <coughs> you sit down in the back. And... Uh, Half of them is saying, hey, why didn't you join us? He said, you know what, I'm not into music. What, you are pious than us? I mean, uh, you think you're so good to hang with us? You think you're better than us? I'm Muslim too, if it's a Muslim school. If it's not a Muslim school, that's beside the point. Now, Muslim women, because they're forgotten among the Muslims, so I have to talk about them. Muslim women. Go to Islamic school or otherwise with hijab on goes to the school. And see all these other people, the colleagues, I don't call them friends. One of the things I uh, put emphasis on that you don't call them their friends. They're your colleagues and classmates. There's a major difference. Allah said, Wallahu waliyu ladina amanu yakhrujuhum minat dhulumati illa nur. A friend is Allah. A characteristics of a friend is will take you from ignorance to the light. The friend don't take you from Jannah towards the Jahannam. And the uh, Quran speaks about it. Oh my people, I call you towards, uh, 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 towards uh, safety from the hellfire, whereas you are calling me towards the hellfire. So they're, they're not friends. They can be friends. The very, very, very definition of friend is protective. Support you for the deen of Allah. So Allah says in Quran, Ta'anu ila al-birr wa la taqwa wa la ta'anu ila al-ithmi wa la Allah said, help each other in doing good and khair and try to protect yourself from doing evil. And there's famous hadith of Rasulullah Wasallam. The point here is, if you see an evil to be done, you try to stop it by your hand. But if you fail to do so, for whatever reason, you at least speak against it. So you go to the school system, sitting down, people are listening to music and saying the haram. These are the people who speak trash all the time. This mouth is full of trash. They talk trash, they sleep trash. The whole day, that's what they do. And once you sit with them, today or tomorrow you become part of them. Whoever associates with a group of people, and they become part of them. I said a lot of theory all this time. Now I must give some examples. What do I mean? Because anytime you study theoretical studies, 
because it's not tangible, because there's no example application of it. In any science you study, unless you study theoretical physics, this all theory only, that's something else. Application. The thing I'm going to say, it is very natural. Some of them I'm going to say this is allowed to do. But this may lead to a track which may not be allowed to be walking on. So, start. For example, he said, yo man, what's going on? Right? It's nothing wrong with that. It's halal to say this. But why are you saying this, brother? I know how to say that. That's not a point. But the point is, why are you going to speak like this, brother? What is the problem? Why are you going to speak like this? You know, brother, this is cool. This is what time we're living in. You know, I'm chilling. I'm part of the club. You're part of the club. What club is this? This club is leading the people toward the hellfire. You're part of this club? But brother, this is not haram. I didn't say it's haram. But surely it is not sunnah. That's for sure. And I can really argue it could be haram. I can play with some technicalities of hadith and end up proving it is at least it is from the doubtful matters. Something that's explicitly clear to be halal, some are explicitly haram. And between them, they have gray matters, which is doubtful. At the least, this is doubtful and nothing else. Now, a Muslim trying to follow a character of a kafir. Why? <coughs> now, let me ask you this. In this deen, Allah has said this complete this deen. We know this deen is complete, right? Unless اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتمنت عليكم نعمتي This deen is complete. And the ni'mah is complete. And Allah has completed this religion. Something is complete, that means it's covered all ground. That's what it means. And if you don't know something, look at the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah says, إِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُكٍ عَظِيمٍ And he is upon the best of the characters. And he is not only upon the best of the characters, he came to do such. I've been sent to rectify the character of the people. Therefore, he is upon the best of the characters and he came to teach the best of the characters. And the ayat of Surah Al-Jumah, تُعَلِّمُونَ الْكِتَابَ الْحِكْمَةِ He came to teach you the book of Allah Azza wa Jalla and the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the youth today, when you go to the school, step number one, anything to do, they're doing it, unless this is a natural process. For example, Wearing a wristwatch. This is not you don't do because other people do because you want to see the time. Some of the people of the uh, uh, of, of um, present day time, and uh, I believe their manhaj is the best, inshallah. And some of them do wear the wristwatch to the right hand. I don't do it, but I admire those who do it. It's no big deal, but the point is this they want to make a point. For every aspect, everything I do, I have the opposite of them. And Rasulullah said, Khalif al Mushrikeen, be opposite of them. Now, let me tell you something. I don't want to point fingers, but I want to give examples. If I give an example, you can connect the dots. For example, the clothing style today you see. I'll be upfront. Men and women, likewise. The fashion today's world, all the pants they make are tight, except few. Uh, surely I don't wear them. That must be obvious. I'm speaking against it. And then. They have other pants, you can go to professional places, you can find it, we are loose. Why do they make this kind of pants? What is the objective behind it? Make tight, skinny pants. Men, women, likewise. Why? What is the hidden agenda behind these things? Why some of the men see some of the kafir, the way you haircut, you do it. Brother, I didn't follow them, I just did because I want to do it. You can argue with me, and I have to agree with you. I trust your uh, judgment. But the point is this, brother, why this way? You short in examples. You never heard of any name of the companions who are young like you? Anybody heard the name of Abdullah ibn Abbas? Radiallahu He's the chief of the Mufassirin. The man learned the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. Anybody heard the name of Anas? Radiallahu an, Who served Rasul Sallallahu for 10 years. Anybody heard the name of Ali ibn Abu Talib? The fourth Khalifa, the son-in-law, the cousin of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anybody heard his name? Anybody know what age he became Muslim? Estimate. Ali ibn Abu Talib, younger than that. A little more than, between 7 and 13, is about 10, 11, around that age. Anybody heard about the son of Ibrahim, named Ismail? When he heard his father say, Ya Buna, Ya Inni Ara fil Manam, Anni Azbahuk, Fandur Mada Tara, he said, Come to his son, Oh, my son, I see you, I'm killing you. What do you think about it? He said, If Alma Tu'mar, do what to you are commanded. Hello, I'm talking about I'm going to kill you. Are you saying, You really understand what I'm saying? He said, yes. 
ستجدني إن شاء الله من الصابرين إن شاء الله you find me among the patient one son 10 years you find many children here 10 years old how many people like this have the conviction and dependence and commitment and compassion for the love of Allah how many people and love is one of the part of ibadah loving Allah willing to give for Allah one thing I like to point out to the shabab is a brother if I don't hang with these young people my school everybody look down upon me look strange like you know I am I am isolated what should I do Rasulullah said Badai Islam Gharib. The Islam came as a strange thing and it will become strange again. In the land of Muslims, it is already strange. In the land of Muslims, it is already strange. And Rasulullah said, Fatuba Lil Guraba Kamakasallah that give the good news to the strangers. Why the stranger? Because they're strange because they're obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When rest of the world gave it up. So, brother, you say you lonely? Ibrahim was lonely. His father rejected him. Rasulullah was lonely, his uncle rejected him. Asya, lonely in the house of Fir'aun. Fir'aun and his companion rejected her, a single woman. Sisters today said, I cannot wear hijab in the school. Even though I wear a hijab, a discounted hijab I call it. It's like 50% off in the hijab. So tight, so small, it doesn't look like a hijab. Right? And the pants they're wearing, and fathers are buying, and mothers are laughing in the same time. It is pathetic. This reflects where you are, what you belong to. Your membership where? What club you belong to? Club of what? Ibn Abbas? Or club of this kuffar? And these people <coughs> who are into kufr and shirk, leading the Muslim today to their path. Whereas Allah Azza wa Jal gave you the best example, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, upon the truth and having the truth. They forgot the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal went somewhere else. Time has come the shabab to understand that I see some of the young men, I don't know anybody here is not, not doing it, but I see some young men keep their beard like, uh, you know, some kids in the street, like tiny lined. I said, what is that, for example? I'm not talking about fiqh here. It's not an issue of fiqh. Is beard wajib? That's what I believe. Some of the ulama don't believe so. Tayyip. And they have their evidences. I don't think that's strong enough. They believe on that. Some of the ulama have the length of the beard. They have their opinion. Other ulama disagree with that. So they have some issue of jumhur opinion. Some are not. Beside the point. But one thing I'm going to say is the cut, haircut style and beer cut style you got, where do you get that from? What did you import it from? Huh? Somebody exported that to you because from the sunnah of sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not, neither his companions, anybody uh, uh, agree with that. So you must have imported that from somewhere else. I see in the train, some, some Muslim woman, you can see by the hijab, at least partial hijab I call it, and headphones on, tapping the foot, you know. Like this in the train. I said, Subhanallah, your hijab and this is not consistent, it's not compatible. But there was a time, Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Do anybody know how many hadiths the Ummul Mumini narrated? Average estimate 2200 something, that's correct. And when she was married to Rasulullah, she was married in Mecca and Medina. You can imagine Rasulullah didn't live too long after um, Madani life, right? So she got her, him, sallallahu alayhi wa very short time. And she was young in age, correct? Nine or sixteen, well, whatever difference of opinion this beside the point, but very young. And she memorized those hadith of sallallahu alayhi wa And this ummah been enlightened by over 2,000 hadith from her only. Radiallahu ta'ala anha. So the point here is, the men today, they're putting their beard like this. Women. Some women, la ilaha illallah. I'm going to say the way it is up front and don't want to sugarcoat it. Some women wear hijab and jilba. Allah musta'an. <coughs> My point is, I want to find a root cause and make you think. I can't change myself. I'm already so deficient. I'm worried on myself. Nafsi, nafsi. But point I want to bring here on the table is the young men and women just to think what I'm heading to. Who is my source? Who is feeding me in? Who is the person doing this? If somebody of la ilaha illallah fear Allah, tayyib. If not, there is a problem. So my understanding, I see many Muslim women wear jilbab. On the top of the jilbab, they wear uh, a jacket or hood, whatever. Right? A tight hood. Like somebody put them on, then they stretch on, on, on the person. That's how it looks like. So why are you wearing this for? They have no larger size in the store. They do, but I like it. 
You know why you like it? 20 years ago, this was in the market. I remember 25, 26 years ago, people weren't wearing this. At least in New York, they weren't wearing it, right? Uh, at least in Brooklyn, they weren't wearing it, I will tell you this. They weren't wearing this. So why are they wearing it? Somebody had an agenda. Putting in front of you, are you buying into it, feeding into it? It seems like Allah and His Prophet failed to give enough example. Now, that's not the case. You're following the wrong example. And I want to ask this sister, sister, why are you wearing this for? Some sister wearing hijab, putting lipstick, walking. I said, why are you doing this? Whom are you trying to please? What is your agenda behind it? I want to know. One of the study of sciences, they call root cause analysis. Anything you study, you want to find the root of it. Where is fitting from? If anybody ever see a fire in a house, you don't spray on the top of the fire. You spray at the bottom of the fire, the root of it. You have to eliminate the root of the problem. The root of the problem, too much desire of the dunya. Trying to follow people of kufr, excluding the people of deen. Their heart is somewhere else. So they're the same one who will put the Quran, Sheikh Abdul Basit, put in the ear and doing all this. After a few minutes, the same ear goes to a pop music, hard rock. It just doesn't, doesn't uh, you know, connect like this. There's a problem there. There's a fundamental problem. And this is the upbringing of the people. Parents fail to do their job. Parents themselves are victim, and children are being victimized. And they go to uh, non-Muslim schools. There's another problem. And some of them being corrupt there, sent them to Islamic school, corrupt that environment also. This is a chain reaction. What can you do about this? This is identification of problems. So diagnose the problem, what is the possible solutions? So men, I saw some of the Muslim men too, the pant is dragging behind them. Right? The belt is loose perhaps, and it's halfway down on their behind. Why are you doing that for? Whom are you trying to follow? I know exactly whom you're trying to follow. I'm not asking you. I'm asking you, why are you going to follow somebody like this? And people use the cursing word in the school. My point is this. If you want to follow the culture of the West, as they call to say that, the West, by the way, if you don't know, if you don't know, I think you do, that this is the most powerful country in the world. Do you know that? The assistance of government, one of the best in the face of Earth. This country, yes. They have check and balance with the three branches of the government. Yes, these people, with the constitution they had, people challenged it. They had 27 am amendments in the constitution of this country. Yes, they are a progressive system. If you go to NASA, they put uh, 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 aircrafts uh, and uh, spaceships all the way moon into the Mars. If you really want to follow, follow that. Be the best top-notch scientist. If you want to be the best, the best brain surgeon in the world, perhaps in New York and other places in the country. If you want to be such, follow the West, follow their tech. Follow it and be the best on that. Don't put a earring. I had a friend I saw many years ago. I uh, came in Texas. That was 1990. Uh, he, came in. he was a student and I saw him in New York. He came in. He came with a <coughs> earring and a guitar in hand. I came from Texas with a hat on there too. I said, uh, what is this? You know, he said, uh, you know, as he tried to say that when you in Rome act like the Romans. I said, in this country, this is the only thing they offer. This country, this is not the only thing offered. You just don't know what is offered. That's the bad part. That's the worst part of it. Do anybody know how many people, how many percent of the people until 2012 finished undergrad in this country? Anybody know? 30%. That was a great achievement in this country that until 2012, that only 30% of the people finish a minimum undergraduate degree in this country. <coughs> Do you know how many people go to grad school? I think 6 to 7%. That implies, to my understanding, all respect, undergrad you don't learn much. You just try to mimic it. Do the homework, pass the exam, and end of the day you got a certificate. Do you know what you studied? You have no clue. So really study, real education starts after the graduate school. That's where real education starts. Undergrad, you pass only. In real graduate school, you really study. So intellectual ability grows in that level, so you don't have much. Now imagine, in this country, only 5% of the people do this. So this must, this must be a scarce commodity, higher education. So be the highest education in your field possible. Why the earring? Why the tiny beard like this? Why the pant halfway down? Why are you talking, yo, man? This doesn't make you any special, by the way. You are just part of the people who are called clown in the street. That's what you are. That's exactly what you are. You're not special than them. You want to be special? Be the best in your class. You have to be a Muslim, no doubt. Be the best in the academic field. Do the best you can in your field.
But why you cannot do it? How many? What time is the adhan? Um, seven thirty. Uh, seven thirty. Thank you, Mr. So, uh, another point when the Sheikh was reciting the Quran, I wrote note this down. I want to talk about this. You know, young men and women being different than others was never easy. It never easy. Rasul Sallallahu in Mecca giving da'wah to the people they called him Majnoon they called him sick didn't they? <coughs> huh? They called him Sudsay they called him they called him names it wasn't easy to be by yourself isolation and those who for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala isolate themselves from this association of the kuffar for them they are the good news from Allah Azza wa Jalla Allah says وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَعَى and those, those are the people who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and protect their nafs, protect their self from doing evil out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah said, for their final abode is paradise. For them. And do you know the seven classes of people will be shaded, day of judgment, under the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the classes of people are the young men and women. Who for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sticking to the deen of Allah. When it's getting so, so difficult for them. They have to find excuse from here to there. To save their soul from haram. They look down. Before back in days they used to say look down. Lower your gaze. Now even lower your gaze shayateen there. So you have to look. There is no way out. It's extremely difficult. But those who are in the moment of difficulty for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hold the tight to the rope of Allah. Shaykh ended the ayah in the Quran and, and, and hold the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kitab Allah sunnah now I studied the discussion with the Quran right the rope of Allah the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now you ask yourself I ask myself we're not Christians that we have to do confession it's not the case may Allah protect us from it now how many of us really Spend time in a weekly basis, open the book of Allah and devote time to reflect on it, not to recite it. Recitation is important and a must. But this is step number one. If you're sick, step number one, to go to doctor, diagnose the problem. Step number two, if you prescribe the medicine, take the prescription, go to the pharmacy, getting the medication. Step, step number three, take it, bring the medication home, not hug it, take it, intake it. If it's oral medication, take it orally. If it is a wine man, you have to put on a skin, put a wine man. Follow the instructions of the doctor. These, these three steps has to be maintained for you to get the benefit from it. So it's not enough to go to step number one, approaching the book of Allah. Approach the book of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one. Number two, learning the book of Allah. Mean memorization, yes. A recitation, yes. The tajweed of it, yes. But this is more than that. <coughs> Understand the hukum of the book of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is in the book? This book, Allah said, Inna hadha al-Qur'an yahdi lillati hiya akwam. This book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide you to the best of the paths. Now, you know, guide means, if I give you a guidance, a direction in German, will you understand that? Anybody speak German here? No, right? No? So if I give a, I don't know German either, but I'm just saying. If I give a, a direction to go to uh, uptown from here in German, you won't understand that, will you? So most of the people are language in Arabic. We recite it, and sometimes we do cry, mashallah, then we forget about it. But many years ago, lack of understanding what it does to a person, let me repeat that. Many years ago, one of my relatives, uh, uh, blood relative, doesn't wear hijab, a female, uh, I met them, I was giving da'wah to them, this about 20 some years ago. In the process of giving da'wah, no matter what I said, they have an excuse to stand right on the spot, they just make up another story to argue with me. So I saw a Quran in front of me. I got upset because every time you tell something, they find an excuse to just to ignore it. I got upset. I, I took the book of Allah and slammed on the table. And this is stuck for Allah. This is the book of Allah. They won't jump on it, kissing on it. I said, why are you kissing the paper? Why are you kissing the paper? This is a printing paper from, from some printer. That's the paper. A Bible could be printed on the same paper. Why this book is important? This book is important because this book carries the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And who is Allah? The Rabb of the earth and heavens. The Rabbul Alameen. This book carries important not because of the, the, the design in the front or the back. 
what it published. The book has its merit because it's the book of Allah Azza wa Jalla, the word of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. This is not from the creation of Allah Azza wa Jalla. This is from the this is the word of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. This is the word of Allah Azza wa Jalla. When Allah said that wear hijab on sister, you don't do. Brother Allah said. That for for then will be harbin bin Allah Rasul about 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 riba about interest. You have two houses of interest. You're the same person kissing the book of Allah and abusing the book of Allah by denying the command of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So the point is this: we are the same generation, same root. May look alike, talk different, fine. But the the message is same. We are in the same boat. So same problem. Father come to the masjid with with soap. And fast Mondays and Thursdays, and go Umrah every year. Look at the rest of the family going going down the drain. What is the problem? I tell them don't listen. But you support somebody who don't listen to the book of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So what do we do about this thing, brothers and sisters? First, one thing uh, from the Sunnah of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that stops all the entertainment, which is death. Which is death. If death, you cannot visualize it. I suggest you go to the hospital, see terminal patient, cancer patient, other patient, and see them and try to realize it could be me tomorrow. If that doesn't bother you, you should go to the to the to the funeral of people and follow. There are a lot of hasanat following the uh, funeral procession until the graveyard and see your friend who was living yesterday talking and eating today in a box, a crane. When I first saw somebody, a human look like an object. First time I saw somebody put into the grave. Then I look at it, Subhanallah, Azim. They put a crane. Look, like it's an object, like boxes of cement in the construction people do. Lift it up with a the machine. They just use a machine to lift it up and down under the earth. And the guy driving on it and pushing dirt on it, and everybody just leave. Winter, summer doesn't leave. It's getting dark. We got to go. Imagine that the sweetness of the life will stop. Sweetness of the life will stop. Just imagine, may Allah forgive us and protect us from our own evil, that when you walk, a bus may stop by and bang you dead. A lot of time we give these examples, like a bus or a car crash, a plane crash may do it. Brother, you're sitting in your home in a chair, the heart attack may do it also. One brother, rahimahullah, passed away. He had a stroke, and the doctor said he'll be out in three days. He was out, but not as a living person. I saw him on the street in Fulton Street in Brooklyn, and the same person was smiling and talking. Three days later, his janaza. I couldn't accept it. It was extremely difficult to accept this. It may just come up from time from the back, from the front. There is no time for it. And Allah speaks about this Quran. In this, in the Quran, that brother and sister, the death may come unannounced, and that moment people are going to say, "Rabbi, لو لا أخرتني إلى أجل قريب فأصدق أكون من الصالحين." That Allah, you're going to take me so quick. Which is quick and which is delayed, only Allah defines that. It's not your call to make. Your call is this, I got to be ready every moment. That what if Allah catches me at this moment. That's why Khutbat al-Hajjah, one of the things, say, na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina. That we ask Allah's protection from our own evil, of our nafs. We are the worst enemy of ourselves. We wish, we wish that we're not born. Because our calamities will be so, 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 so fatal in the day of judgment. <clears throat> One thing to understand that people will understand this thing I'm saying today in the day of judgment. We all gonna understand. We ask Allah's protection from it. Then Allah says, "Wajah Rabbuk wal Malaku Safan Safa." Wajih yom aydin bi Jahannam. When Allah has to establish the day of judgment, the angels of standing rank after rank, and Allah Rabb al Alamin established the day of judgment, and Jahannam is brought forth. People see the Jahannam. Now this is yakin, not iman. People understand for sure. This is for for real. It is for real. And that moment, that moment, people's mind will go left and right. There's no way out. Hal ila kurujim min sabil. Is there any way out from this? Any exit door? It's too late. Brother, one thing to keep in mind, young men and women, may Allah forgive us, that the youth will pass. The sin along the youth will remain. Let me repeat this. The age of youth and the strength and the desire which you have today, it will pass. Age 98, that 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 strength you won't have. But the sin was committed with that strength in age 15 and 20, that will remain on the book. Malihad al-Kitab. 
What is this book? What kind of book is this? Everything is accounted for, nothing small, not the big, was mistaken, not forgotten. Everything is there. One of the things, Shabab, the major problem, we want to be part of the club. And one of the things is tongue. This tongue. Rasulullah told Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu an, because of this tongue, people will be dragged to the hellfire, holding their hair, dragging on their face to the fire. May Allah protect us from it, the tongue. And there is a famous principle in this deen to protect ourselves. Rasulullah said this hadith connected to belief on Allah and Day of Judgment. Not in issue of fiqh or sin, it's a good deed. No. Allah said, Man kana yu'minu billah wa yawm al-akhir fakul khayran aw li yasmud kama qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The whole point is this fundamental thing that Allah who believe in Allah and the last day. He didn't say whoever makes salat al tahajjud with hafiz of Quran or muhad. Uh, fundamental issue for every Muslim if you believe in Allah and the last day. Why the last day is so important? They have accounting. Allah is going to ask you. Allah is going to ask you in front. By the way, day of judgment, when Allah talks to his servants one to one, there's no interpretation in the middle. There's no interpreter in the middle. No translation required. One to one. One to one discussion. 50,000 years people wait for Allah. That day, your friend from the school, John, sister, your friend Christina in the school, who gave you the pop music, they're nowhere around. You by yourself. You by yourself. That the people standing in front of Allah جل, by themselves only. The bodies are not there. And your parents? Not there. Why they're not there? They're here with you, but they're not there. Why not? That day, people will reject their friends and brothers' parents. Every single one, they don't want to be close to them. Out of the fear, they may lock me into something that I'll be stuck. I'll be in a jam. So brothers and sisters, if you go to a school or somebody in a professional world, one thing you have to do, you have to mix with people. There's no way out. Unless you live in the jungle. You have to mix with people. One of the things, protect yourself. How? Constant reminder of death. Constant reminder of death. And all the time, the Quran, and Askar in the tongue. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd, la ilaha illallah, astaghfirullah, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do, keep yourself busy with it. Occupied. Somebody asked me, I was sitting down doing this, some of my two friends came in from the side, and start opening the iPad, start playing music. Muslims. I'm not talking about Catholic, I'm talking about Muslims. So what should I do now? Some Muslims today, at least we have some level of Iman left. Then you say, you know what, you guys enjoy yourself. This is the Mas'hab, I have the Quran. I'm going to go and sit in the corner and read the Book of Allah. Read the Book of Allah and it's a free space. So you have to have this mind to defend yourself. Take the Book of Allah in the Quran, keep reading the Quran by yourself. That point they won't come. Perhaps they will look and regret that I should join them. But the bad part is many Muslims, rather than doing that, they say, can you have the headphone in my ear too? Let me listen. See what is in there. It sounds so good. Can you give me a copy of it? Subhanallah. So time has come. The Muslim has to thank burden for themselves. Another thing. Rasulullah said in the hadith, نِعْمَتَانِ مَقْبُونٌ فِيهِمَا كَثِيرًا مِّنَ النَّاسَ السِّحَ وَالْفَرَقَ كَمَا قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ Two of the blessings of Allah, the bounties of Allah, people abuse and waste. One of them is free time. Free time. Free time, people talk, as I said, bunch of trash. I have seen many places people sit down, discuss. Half an hour, you can see to the back and listen what they talk. After the finish half an hour discussion, I said, can I ask you something? Yes. The brother, what was the introduction of the discussion? Can you give you the uh, title statement? What was the discussion is about? You know, we're just talking. Okay. And the, after the discussion is over, what was the conclusion of the discussion? You know, it's not a formal discussion. We just, you know. So you started a discussion without a goal, objective. And at the end of the discussion, you have no take-home message. So what did you do? Quote, you wasted your time. And by the way, Day of Judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask about this time. Youth, shabab, young men and women, if you follow someone who is not following Allah and His Prophet, and you follow their method of life, and that method, if it leads to hellfire, you're just holding the tail of the person just to go along with the person. 
If you think you can endure the punishment of day of judgment and the hellfire, then so be it. And if you think you can deal with it, then time to come to protect yourself. Now, you know that the least amount of penalty, punishment, day of judgment and the hellfire will be a burning coal under the foot of a person that will boil the brain. You know that, right? You know the human body is not a good conductor. Everybody know that? Right? It's not a good conductor. Copper is a good conductor. Right? It, it radiates a lot of heat because uh, it conducts. The human body is not a good conductor. But it does conduct heat. Otherwise, you won't see body temperature. Because, the, because you can measure the body heat behind the skin, below the skin. That means it does conduct some heat. Imagine if some heat goes on the bottom of the foot and that heat will travel through the bone and the body all the way up and start boiling the brain. We ask Allah's protection for our own sins. Now, imagine if the, bone, uh, the brain is boiling, distance-wise, your stomach is much before that. Right? Imagine what happened to the stomach before that. Intensity heat should closer to the source, correct? So further you go up, less of the heat. The least amount of heat which reaches the, reaches the brain, that will boil the brain. Imagine this, we, we ask Allah's protection from it. This is a serious matter. This is a serious discussion. This is not entertainment here. To understand that Allah is not here to play around. And Allah said explicitly in the book of Allah, huzwa, and do not take the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as joking around. It's not a playing around thing. And Allah told Yahya, Khuzuma atayna kum bikuwa. Allah told the messenger, what I give you, take it serious. Time has come to take some serious. And parents have a role to play. And if you fail to play your role, by the way, playing one of the role is buying a good jacket for Eid, this is not one of the roles, by the way. Giving a fried chicken to eat, this is not one of the roles parents has to play. Parents may choose to play, but don't have to do it. I don't have to buy soda for them. I'm not obligated to do that. As long as they get basic food and shelter, this is I'm responsible for. That's all. But in the deen, I'm fully responsible from the day they're born. You give the adhan in one year, that's what you do. Let the child know that Allah is the greatest. Allahu Akbar. You start from a child, don't understand anything about anything. A child has no faculty, no retention. That time you go to the year and say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Why you do that? The child don't understand anything. But when the child is born, the very moment remind the child that where you came in this dunya, Allah is the greatest. And you remind the child when you grow up, Allah has created this life and death, give you this delta T, the time called life, so Allah can test you. So this is a place of test. No student ever go to the college and school, says that, oh, I have took a test. Nobody says that, because you know, part of the process, you will be tested. And let it be known, part of the process in this life, you will be tested. You will be tested, the people who sing a song, cursing word, you have to turn other way. Women, your friend will be dressing, putting makeup, and doing all the haram on the book. And if you cannot protect yourself, you're part of them. A day of judgment, if they go to the hellfire, you just being part of that club which goes to the hellfire. The so parents, what's your responsibility? Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, All of you are shepherd, or the managers, I will call this way, in different tone, different word, your managers. Manager responsible for the people under your command. The so children under your command, you have to start it. What do you start? Number one, the moment the child is born, give adhan in the air. And aqiqah, obviously, you know the process. Age seven, you advise them for salah. Now, if you don't make salah on time yourself, at least five times a day, not that them at most, at least five times a day, you don't, then how do you expect them to set an example? You have to set an example. So first thing first, about age seven, culture them for salah. Age 10, Rasulullah Sallam said that if they don't listen, he gives them some physical counseling, they call it. Fix them a little bit. But my point is this, if you start from day one, it must not reach this end. Another famous thing of the Hadith of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this Ummah will be divided in 73 groups. 
73 فرقة كلهم من نار إلا واحدة أكما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم that this ummah will be divided in 73 groups this ummah not the ummah of kufr this ummah will be divided so among the people many Muslims don't pray in khanzir and khamra in riba in, in, in showing the beauty of their face to somebody else right these are the ummah of Rasulullah today you can't take an example from it it's too late now if you are willing not to socialize too much I told some of uh, some people who are very close to me I told them one of the difficult part for a person to stick to their deen is if they want to also hang around with other people if a mind of hanging out I want to be always party mind like I always want to party with people I need somebody to talk to they always want to be somebody else okay, let me tell you this I have done research for years one thing you cannot do academic or Islamic research in a shopping mall it doesn't happen this way and I have met many scientists alhamdulillah I saw them research close the door put earplugs and study Deen or dunya doesn't matter applied physics science neurology you can study anything but study reflection analysis requires calm place quiet place <coughs> and dedication and focus and to get this you cannot be a party boy or party girl it doesn't work this way so if you feel like talking to people too much one thing, you hold your tongue before Allah takes the voice out from you. Hold your tongue, hold it. He said, this is the tongue, either it's about Allah or Prophet Sallallahu or keep quiet. Now, sisters, many Muslim women today are too busy doing makeup. In a makeup, I call it fake up. Makeup means you're making something up. This is not real. In the college, you take makeup exam, right? That means you couldn't do it at the right time. You didn't make it up. So you are not what you are, you're trying to pretend to be something. That's deception. That's called deception. As a Muslim, we do not do deception. You're trying to pretend to be something which you're not. Somebody says you look so young, but you're not young. So big deal. No matter how young you are, how pretty you are, everything will vanish. Everything must go. You got to go. So you got to go, better pack your bags before somebody pull you, snatch you. So sisters, don't waste too much time pretending in front of a mirror. If you want to invest some time, not waste time, put your good deeds or bad deeds in front of the mirror. Take your, uh, take your uh, the, the book of deeds and put it in front of the mirror and do the analysis where I belong. Allah said, Today you are enough for yourself to see where do you belong, to the nar or to the jannah. And Allah said, they are not the same. They are not the same. Allah clarified that. So you decide. Put your book. That day I lied. I didn't pray on time. I went to make up. I'm cursing. I'm listening to music. I'm looking at evil thing. This all have my bad deeds. Good deeds, I said salam to my parents one day. That's a good deed. And that's a bad deed. You weigh out. You check yourself where you belong. Take that in front of a mirror. And make the judgment where you belong. So don't waste too much time in the makeup because this, this fake up is not going to take you anywhere. And if we intend this to, if we intend to put the makeup on your face to show other people whom you're not allowed to show, according to the Sunnah of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, those who put per perfume to draw attention of others, they are commi committing zina. And you are in the same track by analogy that you are following the same intention leading to the same action. So fathers and mothers, Buying the makeup and supporting the children, these children, day of judgment, are going to put a case against you that my parents supported me to do that. I didn't buy it. They told me to buy it. They allowed me to buy it. Some cases, they gave me the gift to use it. So the point here is, brothers and sisters, we can talk for hours. One thing when it's winter, anybody walking in winter, like somebody's car break down, and you have to walk miles before you reach a gas station, if you ask him, what is the first thing you want? He said, I want to be in a warm place. Next, can you have give me a warm drink, some coffee or something? Because I'm freezing. You need a protection. Cool place. Protection from this kufr, protection from shirk and haram or the fawahish. One of the things in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the masajid lillah. This is the place, which is the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Come here. Do nothing, sit down. Do your homework. Do your homework in the masjid. Somewhere in the corner, sit on the table, finish your homework. House of Allah, you protect it. The, the least thing you can do, you keep quiet. That's all you can do. The worst thing in a masjid you can do is keep quiet. That's all you can do. No askar. 
and the list haram you can do out there, you name it. I'm not going to tell you. The house of Allah is in protection. If you don't feel like reading anything, open the book of Allah. Just look at the huruf. Alif Lam Mim 30. Hasanat already. Dalik al Kitab, Ton more Hasanat. Just read and keep counting on it. Book of Allah. <coughs> don't feel like reading the book of Allah? Put a headphone, listen to the book of Allah. Don't feel like doing it? Ask your friend, you read, I listen. He get reading hasanat by listening to hasanat. And another thing, people gather to discuss the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The angels report that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you remember Allah in a gathering, Allah rem remember you in a better gathering than you. So you start a process of halakha, getting together. If nothing else you can do, fall asleep, brother. It is better than committing sin. It be neutral. Because if you sleep, there will be good health graph for fajr, that's hasanat. Because this process leading to a good deal, which is Salat al-Fajr, in a good health to get up. This process, that's an hasanat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Easy way out. And if nothing else, if you like, because brother, all the thing you said is boring stuff. It's for 90 years old people. I mean, you're not being practical. You're not being practical, brother. Now we find some good Muslims play basketball who practice Allah's deen. Play basketball with that. Your good health is allowed. But I, in and of the school of thought, that if... Nothing else we like. I feel like talking, do all these bad things. Get some food. So Bismillah, better keep eating. Till you get exhausted. Why these mechanisms? Because your mouth is busy. So Bismillah, eating halal food. You're already in the chain of good deeds. Because mouth is occupied, your tongue won't run on somebody else. Right? You get full, you fall asleep. So at least better than that. Better than that. So an evil person is better when, when he or she is sleeping than when they're up. Correct? Because you cannot propagate evil when you're sleeping. It's the advantage to it. So at the least do that. And find good friends. And if you don't find any friends, here is the point I'm going to make, young man, that if you don't find any friends, let it be known Allah is your friend. Wallahu waliyu ladina amanu. Allah is your friend. Allah, Allah declare, you're not declaring. Allah is declaring Allah is your friend. So don't push Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aside. He, he doesn't deserve that. And the shaykh said, وَمَا قَدْرَ اللَّهَ كَقَدْرِهِ You don't give Allah's due right. You don't ask Allah's friendship, He may not give you. But Allah is saying, I am your friend. And you're rejecting the friendship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and getting to somebody else. And if you need to love something, love something you're never going to lose. Love something which you're never going to lose. I love summer. Brother, after three months you're going to lose it. Don't love something which you can't hold it. I love this life, you're going to die. Don't hold it. Love Allah. In the Allah, how you lie, Allah ever live and ever dies. Love Allah, you'll never lose. And Allah will call upon their friend day of judgment and reward them for their patience because they are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah said, Alladina amanu ashaddu hubban lillah. Those who believe in Allah, they love Allah the most. You are a believer, your love is for Allah. My friend neglected me, but Allah didn't neglect you. Allah is in your side. Don't go to the other side. If you do, you can fight against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I think this discussion. I had one intention, then I wanted the Qur'an to be part of it because it was really deep. And uh, whatever I say good is from Allah Azza wa Jal only. And whatever bad I, and mistake I said, it is my weakness and the waswas of shaitan. Aqawli hadha wa astaghfirullah wa li wa lakum subhanaka Allah mihamdika shalu Allah ilha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tibilayhi. Allah mahsina akibitina fi umuri kulliha ajinna min khizi al-dunya wa adhabi al-akhirah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.